Welcome to the D.O. Boxing Show. I'm your host, Damon Acposio, and I'm here with promoter Mark Irwin. He's going to have uh, an amazing show happening in Oshawa on September 22nd, but we're going to get to know who Mark Irwin is a little bit before talking about the show. So, Mark, how did you get your start in boxing, and like, where was that initial uh, spark from? Probably Ali Foreman. Ali Watching Foreman. Ali Foreman. None of uh, none of my family were uh, boxing fans. My dad, even in the last ten years, said, "Why the hell do you like boxing? What's that all about?" <laughs> and I remember uh, screaming and yelling, and you know when that fight happened and what was going on. And then uh, I think my next recollection of anything being really, really cool was Sugar Ray Leonard winning the Olympics in uh, Montreal. So as a young guy, uh, you know, getting to see it was really, really cool. So uh, whether that's a start in boxing, or not, I don't know, but. Uh, you know, one of the most Canadian kids or, you know, hockey freaks I've never, ever played <laughs> organized hockey in my life. Oh, wow. You know? So where where was um, growing up? Where was home growing up? Uh, born and raised in Scarborough. Okay. But, uh, but one of those kids that, uh, you'd swear my dad was in the Army, but no, moved around everywhere, right across Canada and uh, even into the U.S. for a, a, a little um, brief stint. And then uh, my roots now are in uh, Guelph and have been for over... 20 years with my wife. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So you've, um, you're have you known in, in uh, boxing circles, you go to the fights, um, you know, you have managed uh, uh, fighters before. What was that experience like working in the boxing market? And you were doing it at a time where it was very difficult in Ontario to be involved in boxing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I for, for me, just the, the passion for the sport, was uh, I guess um, first and foremost. I mean, I love it, but I, but I respect it more than anything. I really, really respect it. Um, being fortunate enough uh, to be in a position over the over the years, over the course of uh, uh, almost thirty years, I guess, um, smelling the air in Las Vegas during fight week. I mean, it's completely different. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I was really fortunate. I. I uh, I remember seeing a, a poster in a Wild Wing restaurant and, you know, decided to give them a call to sponsor it. Okay. I loved it, wanted to sponsor it. And then uh, from there, um, the United Promotions, who were basically the staple in Ontario and did such a wonderful job, joined them and sponsored uh, sponsored many of their events. And over time, I think, you know, uh, I guess, um, I, maybe it's just an armchair critic. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I have a lot, thousands of hours of boxing on uh, VHS and DVD and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, thought I knew the sport uh, until you really get into it. And you realize you really don't know as much as you think you do. Um, but, uh, we're all students of the game. We're all students yeah, of the game. Yeah, so, to learn. So, um, yeah, I had, uh, you know, one of my um, first ventures into this was, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like a, a friends with uh, Courtney Shand, who was uh, with, with Lennox Lewis. And... Uh, Got to meet Lennox and uh, helping him in the I'm in the auto industry and so helped him out with um, with uh, his uh, Hummer back in the day and uh, his own family uh, you know his nieces and stuff like that and helped him out uh, that way so it became more of an intimate connection with the boxing world nice and then uh, eventually worked uh, worked a little bit and uh, became um, I'm gonna say friends first friends first mm -hmm. and then manager second with uh, Steve Molitor to this day who is uh, one of my closest friends and you know definitely one of the most accomplished fighters being a two-time world champion uh, from Ontario. So we talked a little bit about Vegas. Um, I'm going to ask you about something that occurred on September 8th, T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, where there's two Canadians on the actual fight card. Um, and I just kind of wanted to know if you watched it and, and your feeling about the whole fight card in general and then, and then the main event. Well, I don't know who fought on the 8th, but I know who fought on the 15th. Oh, the 15th. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I wasn't, Saturday the 15th. I wasn't, I wasn't in those fights. I wasn't in those fights. Um, allow me just to step back prior to that. Okay. In Sammy Vargas out in the UK. Yes. Come on. You know, it was Vargas versus Khan versus the guy in the blue shirt. Right. You know what I mean? It, this was more of a Royal Rumble than it was anything else. You know what? The outcome may have been the same. I don't care. But... Uh, to, to Sam Vargas. He did a great did job. A, who did a bang-up job. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to the 15th. Um, look, 
you know, first and foremost, how, how cool is it to see a young kid from Ontario who received zero coverage from the media, and I'm banging on the media again, sorry, mm -hmm. but whose uh, promotional team worked extremely hard to get him where he's at, had a, had a, had a you know, had a, had a disappointing, uh, disappointing news in the UK where not one but two fights fell through. That's right. And, uh, you know, the boxing gods uh, knocked on the door and provided this opportunity mm -hmm. um, against, uh, gosh, uh, just a, a beast. A young a, killer. A, kid, a mm -hmm. kid who's the new Chavez or the new Alvarez, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, this Munguia kid is a um, 21-year-old uh, uh, phenom, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Brandon Cook can hold his head super duper high. Um, you know, many of the many of the young lads out there in Ontario or in Canada don't even get that opportunity to fight for a world title. He did, deserved it, and um, yeah. And he tried. And he tried his best. And uh, Mungia, I think, used every um, advantage that he could in terms of rehydrating. It looked like two different weight classes. Yeah, in there. two different weight classes. And I mean, you know what? Uh, you know, it's a different world. I mean, you know, Brandon. Brandon, excuse me. Uh, uh, you know, Brandon worked, uh, you know, right up until recently, so right. every day, where, you know, uh, not taking any away thing from, taking away anything from uh, the young uh, Jaime Munguia, but he, I mean, he's probably had a thousand amateur fights already. These kids fight. This is what they do. Yeah. And the, 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 the sparring and everything that's available and things like that, so, and, uh, you know, of course, he's got a powerhouse promotion behind him and uh, the kid's on the rise. Uh, he's going to be world champion for some time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, you know David Lemieux, what a team he has behind him! Yeah. What a team he has behind him! Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, uh, sometimes you know when 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 De La Hoya was coming back off of a little adversity, they handpicked Arturo Gotti to fight him. You know, because he knew he'd stand there, mm -hmm. and De La Hoya was just going to pick him apart mm -hmm. and make it look sensational. And when Arturo Gotti fought Joey Gamache, it was the same scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, the opposite, of course, now this is Arturo got on the, on, the, on the winning end of things. Um, David Lemieux's opponent was perfect for him. Oh, yeah. Perfect for him, mm -hmm. you know. And as a result of that fight, for me, his next fight should be Alvarez. I if they can make that little weight adjustment there. Mm -hmm. Um because David has a tough time making the 160, but, mm -hmm. uh, wow. And the, the two Canadian kids, man, and you know them both. I mean, I don't, you know, I, have, I don't sit down and have dinner with the guys, but mm -hmm. of course they know they've been on the same cards with them, you yeah. know, uh, walk down the same uh, alleyway, probably had breakfast a time or two. Um, uh, hats off to them, and it's uh, super. Super for Ontario, super for Canada. Absolutely, and, um, and to two nice guys as well. Oh, you know, that's the one thing I must say that, uh, I encourage all, all, all the young fighters out there, follow in the footsteps of young Brandon Cook because that kid, he does so much for the community and he's sincere about it. He's a young gentleman mm -hmm. and, I, and I love that about it. He respects the sport inside and out. So good, good on him. And um, what did you think about the main event? Sort of highly suspected that. I, I, I mentioned uh, to a, a source I'll remain unknown. Um, if, if Alvarez gained any more experience from the last fight, I thought he might come out on top because I figured that at this stage of the game, what new tricks can Triple G have? The fight turned out to be the exact same fight as I thought it might be, and I have to say, I don't know that this one has any less controversy than, than the first one, <laughs> but you know what? I don't think anybody should be jumping up and down screaming mad that Alvarez won the fight. Um, uh... But I'm not so sure that uh, Triple G lost the fight. So it's a toss up. Mm -hmm. Is it worthy of like an Arturo God Mickey Ward 3? I think so. I, <laughs> I think, think Triple so too. G's in the order. I think, I think so too. Yeah. Um, so let us know about your fight card coming up now. Yeah. This is going to be September the 22nd. Um, you know, there's going to be some talented fighters on the fight card. Um, Jesse Wilcox being one of them. But let us know about the whole fight card. How, how's it looking? Uh, it's looking good. It's mm -hmm. looking good. I mean, for the first time out, uh, you know, uh, it's exciting yet nerve-wracking as well. I was a new new kid on the block, and uh, I'd like to do it again, but I guess we'll see how things turn out. But you know what? I'm excited for the people of Oshawa, mm -hmm. and I'm excited for these new people that are getting out to get a chance to uh, debut their skills. 
you know, the minute uh, the minute they step between the ropes, they are officially a professional. Yes, they've signed the contract, but the minute they step between those ropes, they're going to be a paycheck at the end of that fight and uh, win, lose, or draw. Uh, they're a professional. Uh, like I mentioned, the two youngsters at a Motor City Boxing Club, um, Evan Gallard and Dad Ritzel, um, they're debuting in their hometown. How exciting is that? Almost 50 years later, 1969, mm -hmm. the last time there was boxing there. So the Motor City has got some, uh, some pro, pro boxing coming their way. Um, Pride of Curve Lake, First Nation, Jordan and New Age McHugh, he's coming out. This kid, I've watched him transform. Uh, looking pretty sharp, hits like a truck. And uh, good luck to him. He's fighting a local kid, Brantford, uh, Darren Fletcher. Oh, okay. So, uh, so that's nice. A couple, of Ontario, a couple of Ontario kids going at That's really, really nice. And out from Belleville, Madison Blakely is a rematch with uh, uh, Dolores Garcia. Uh, they fought to, I, I'm told, a controversial uh, uh, loss for uh, Blakely. And uh, talking to dad and coach, Jerry, he says uh, she's coming prepared. So, you know, um, it'll be... Uh, uh, I guess a lot of action, eight minutes or less uh, during their uh, during their fight. Very nice. And then uh, the three lions um, coming out of their den, uh, the Rock, Jesse Wilcox. Watch this kid. Watch this kid. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm he's, telling he's you. He's got extensive amateur experience, and uh, you know what? He's fearless. He's a, he's an action fighter. He, and, and yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, when I see when I see other guys out there calling out. Other guys and things like that. I don't think that's in his nature. I think that uh, he'll answer the call. Mm -hmm. Call him out. He'll answer the call. Mm -hmm. Don't know whether he's going to be doing the one doing the calling. He does his uh, talking in the ring. Mm -hmm. um, he just came out, uh, come off the last card uh, that the uh, three lions put on, and absolutely destroyed a guy in one round, in one less than a round, mm -hmm. uh, for a small uh, small title, and uh, good for him. He's taking on a, a Mexican kid that's uh, eight and two. So, you know, similar amount of fights and mm -hmm. uh, should be nice. It's a main event. It's going to be a big test. Yeah. So Jesse Wilcox is going to be the main event on September 22nd, 2018. Get your tickets from the fighters that are going to be on the event. Find them on um, social media. So basically Facebook, Instagram, however. And it's going to be, where is it going to be in, in Oshawa? Yeah, it's, uh, it's called the Children's Arena. Odd name, I get it, but uh, it's a staple in the community over there. It's a it's a fantastic little arena. The setting is going to be very very nice. The tables on the floor. There's going to be some floor seats that'll still be left, and a few general admissions as well. Okay. And um, yeah, walk up. Uh, hopefully, it's a heavy night of uh, walk up traffic, but uh, yeah, the the place will. Uh, Place will be rocking, that's for sure. Okay, so if you don't get your tickets in advance, get them at the door. It's going to be a great event in Oshawa on September 22nd. September 22nd, we'll see you there. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, <laughs> and it's great that we're bringing more fights to Ontario. So hopefully the tradition continues. We've seen great growth. Remember, if you have any questions related to boxing, send us a message through Twitter at D-O-K-P-O-S-I-O through email at posio at hotmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to get every episode of the D-O Boxing Show. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode, and we'll catch you on the next one. D-O! <laughs>